Okay, this video is going to cover how to add the missing resistor or add the filter PWM input to your Avalon if you decide not to send it in to us to have um, the missing resistor added and you want your tech or yourself to do it on hand. Okay, so ideally send it in, um, have us um, get the part put in, uh, we pay return shipping and that's going to be your your easiest method and the best method as far as getting it done totally um, correctly however if you want to do it on hand like i said and you have a tech or you're handy with soldering it's not impossible to do there's two different methods to do this you can either take this sub assembly this whole assembly stack out of the enclosure and this is the missing part right here and replacing that yourself or there's an alternative method that I'm going to show where we basically mimic the three components of the filter PWM input on the back of the enclosure here so we run the wires here instead of here and in that case all you have to do is take the bottom panel off of your unit so we missed the missing resistor on the third lot of boards for the sixth run of the Avalon uh, filter PWM is not part of our automated testing, and we just simply missed it. Um, it's obvious now in hindsight looking at a board such as this one that the part is missing. I believe it's a 2512 resistor, but it'll be added in the description of the video along with everything else needed to do this. Okay, so now I'm going to cut to another video, which is going to start off by removing the bottom panel of your Avalon, and I'm going to show the two methods of adding your filter PWM input. You're going to start by removing six screws on the back of the unit. These are JIS number two screws. So use a JIS screwdriver if you don't want to strip the screws. Once you get these six screws removed, you can just pull out this bottom panel and you'll be left looking at the bottom of the unit. Now, solution number one, which is the more crude solution, is to replace the filter PWM, the RC um, filter, and the uh, mix resistor that goes to the filter input. Replace it on the bottom of the board um, so you do not have to remove this from the whole thing. So if you're doing this option, I'm gonna cut to another video that I took where I added a 1K resistor from the filter PWM output of the microcontroller and a uh, 220 nanofarad capacitor to ground. Um, and then I have a little wire going over here to the filter um, input via a 100K resistor. So I'll show that. So here's a unit. You wouldn't even have to take this out of the case. All you'd need to do is take the back panel off, six screws, you'd have access to the back and what we're doing is we're patching a 1K resistor to the pin there. There'll be a picture of this too, a high resolution picture. So you have a 1K resistor going to a 220 nanofarad capacitor, which goes to ground. So that point there is ground. And then you have a lead going towards your filter CV summing input which is the third pin on this connector right here. And I'll, again, there'll be a picture with probably a higher resolution, better view of this. So you can see this 100K resistor going into the third pin on that connector there, going back to the 220 nanofarad and the 1K, and the 1K going to this pin here, which goes to the CPU. The other side of the 220 nanofarad going to ground. And this is very easy to understand once you see the, the schematic. So this is literally replacing the circuit on the other side. So this board does actually have the um, resistor installed. I just did the stuff on the back temporarily for the purpose of this video. So assuming this um, re resistor is here, usually the trace comes up here to this resistor, goes to the cap here, the 220 nanofarad film cap here, 
and then it usually goes up to this resistor here on the end and then it goes over here to that same pin so you're basically replacing the same circuit on the bottom of the main board instead of doing it on the top of the panel board so that's what's going on there if you want to do it the correct way you will need to remove the whole pcb stack assembly from the enclosure and it's not particularly easy you're going to need a 10 millimeter low profile driver nut driver this is a weha model 372 and the reason you need low profile head on that is because you're going to need to remove these caps and the driver is going to need to fit in here so the driver you have to hold the knob it's kind of hard to do hold the knob it's a collet knob loosen the nut on the top and then you'll end up with your collet knob Once you remove the 16 knobs, you're gonna have 16 panel nuts, but they're custom slotted panel nuts. And I'll link the tool in the, in the description. Um, we have some custom tools that we just machined ourselves that we tend to use for this. Um, but there is some tools off the shelf that you can buy from one or two places to fit this slot. Otherwise, you'll have to just use whatever you have at hand. Sometimes they're loose enough to to get off. Yeah, that one's that one's good. So you might want to just try to, you know, not ruin the enclosure by using the wrong tool. But um, if you buy the right tool, you're fine. Otherwise, just take your time, and you're gonna loose in all 16 okay once you get all those panel nuts out you're going to turn the unit over and there's going to be three nuts at the bottom you're going to need a 5.5 millimeter um, low profile driver for that or uh, a 732 will fit just fine as well. This is a Weha 732 model 265 um, little nut driver. And the reason you want a, a low profile one is to reach into this, especially this middle nut here. So you're going to remove the three nuts. You can just let them rattle around inside for now. Okay, and I'm going to hold the board in and just kind of shake the, that hardware out, at least what I can. See this over here, this is a ground strap. It may come with or without the quick connect spade. I'll show you in a second. Okay, but you're gonna, you're gonna turn this around and then you're gonna shake it loose carefully. You're gonna kind of slide down, down and off. And then you're gonna have this panel with the front so top and front, you don't have to do anything with that. Put that aside safely. Okay, so once you get that out, you're pretty much ready to, to go and add this resistor. But uh, just take stock of your hardware. You're going to have... This is the, the female, or I'm sorry, the male um, fast on quick connect that attaches to, to this. We'll go over that in a second when we put it back together. But in addition, you're going to have a bunch of plastic spacers or plastic washers and some stainless steel washers. So you're gonna have three stainless steel washers and three white plastic washers. And we'll go over where they go when we put this thing back together in a second. Okay, so now that you have the unit out, all you're gonna do is add the resistor, which will be linked in the description as well. And you're going to add it to this placement right there. I think it's a 2512 size, but it'll be in the description. It's a very, very large resistor. So you might want to use some uh, solder wick or something to remove one, the solder from one or both pads. It's a 1K resistor.
So I don't know how we missed this um, sort of visual inspection, but uh, filter PWM is not, or was not, part of the automated um, test routine. So we just missed it when we're visually inspecting. So these come in, we've had four batches for this run. They come in at four different times. And uh, one batch was missing that part and we did not notice. I'm gonna clean that off with some alcohol. Okay, so I'm adding this clip about three weeks later from the rest of this video that was originally published because we found there was an additional problem um, with this batch of board. So the part was missing there, we just soldered it in. But also R328 right here above the volume pot is the wrong value. You'll notice it'll say 1001 on it, which is the four digit uh, resistor code for 1K. It should be 100K. So if you got the parts kit from us, it includes all of the parts to either um, add the parts to this side or to do the other option to add the stuff to the bottom. It comes with all the parts. So you just use whatever option you choose, um, but it will have this 100K resistor in it. So replace that one as well. And that's it, you're good to go. So now you gotta put this thing back together in reverse order, but I'm gonna show you the order of the hardware. So I'm gonna get the enclosure again. Make sure that you have all these panel washers, one on each potentiometer, and make sure your dust guards are on your slide switches. Maybe put the slide switches in the middle position to make it easier to put on. Okay, so I've turned this around for you to see. You're gonna put a plastic washer here in that position, a plastic washer in the middle position, and a stainless steel washer on the end, okay? Then you're gonna hold it in one hand, if you're right-handed, probably your left hand like this. In fact, even if you're left-handed, I think this is gonna be easier. So you hold it like this. Make sure you tuck this ground strap kind of underneath so you don't have to worry about it. And then you're you're just gonna line it up and kind of stick it in and bam! You're gonna have to slap it together real quickly without any of the hardware falling out. Um, I'd say I got lucky there, but I've done this like 1600 times or something. So get a couple of these panel nuts tan uh, hand tightened. Once you get a few of them in, you can kind of let the unit go. It's not going to fall out. I'm going to hand tighten the rest. Okay, once you get all of these in, there's a little bit of play in the movement, just a tiny bit, but the best thing to do is to visually look at the record button here and sort of center the switch in the hole and while holding the unit tighten this one here and then you can kind of do the same thing on the other side it's usually lined up pretty well and just try to center the the switch in the cutout in the panel it's usually kind of centers itself um, and then before you start tightening them all just make sure you have no binding on any of your switches And then you can go ahead and tighten the panel nuts. You might want to test the unit before doing this. Make sure that it's all working. You can test it in this state. You won't damage it. You can plug it in and, and fire it up. Turn it over. Now you have three washers left. You've got two stainless steel and one plastic. You're gonna put the plastic one in the middle and you're gonna to have to use something like a small screwdriver or I'm using this trimmer tool and get it over the stud. Okay, and then one on each side. Then you're going to put the M3 serrated lock nut one here 
one here. And then for the last position, make sure you find that, that chassis ground strap. Make sure that the male connector is attached and put it over the stud and the washer. So the washer is already on there and then the, the quick connect goes on there. And then on top of the quick connect, that last nut. I might be making this look easy because I've done it thousands of times, but um, just be patient. Okay, and then once you've got that done, that's pretty much the meat of it. So reverse order, panel back on, six screws, put your knobs back on, put your collet knobs back on, and then the two collet knob caps, and then you're good to go.